Welcome back everyone to DreamHack Beyond Qualifier number one. My name is Bahamut. We are here in game number three of the day. This is going to be Simplicity versus 30k. Thank you all so much for being patient. Thanks for waiting. And we are here ready to go into our next map. And it is going to be Dragonshire in our next best of three. I am very, very excited about this. Thank you all for joining me as I have uh, ran up and down the hallway a few too many times. Whew. Whoever wins this week doesn't have to worry about next week, uh, or the following week, or the week after that, or the week after that. Yes, you're right, Fizz. That is a good point. So, we are here. We have the Zeratul ban with the Uther from the side of 30k. Simplicity is going to ban out the Lucio. Some respect bans coming out here. You know, Cure does not want to, uh, excuse me, 30k doesn't want to deal with Cure's Zeratul. The side of Simplicity doesn't want to deal with uh, ya uh, Yasu's... Uh, Lucio, like, it's just, it, there's a lot of respect coming out from both sides. Uh, uh, Simplicity actually will ban out the Medivh. First pick goes over the side of 30k. What are we going to kick off this game with? What is it going to be? Uh, Uther's banned out. Cassia, maybe? Brightwing, possibly? It's Dragonshire. Gonna be a Rexar for the solo lane, potentially. Um, Rexar doesn't always play in the solo lane, especially when we have uh, Hazuabs on that, but we'll have to see. Uh, that's a lot of weeks. That is a lot of weeks day. It is a lot of weeks. How you doing, friend? Good to see you. Uh, next two picks, though, coming out from the side of Simplicity. What are they prioritizing? Hogger for the solo lane into the Rexar, potentially. I just, I, I don't know. I don't know what the, the prior for, for either of these teams are going to be going into this. Will be a Tychus as well. Okay, so sustain damage from the Tychus as well as the solo lane control. Cure's Zeratul is truly revolting. Uh, it is it is disgusting. It is very, 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 very strong. Next two picks, though, coming out from the side of 30k before we go into our next ban phase. It, it's it's really up in the air. Like, the, the Rexar doesn't give any direction... Excuse me, doesn't give any direction whatsoever. Brightwing will be grabbed. And a new Brack for Burrow Burst Potential. Okay. I like it. I like it. A lot of good mobility from the Anubrak, good setup and burst and dive into the back line. Uh, they're playing on NA or EU, they are playing on NA Central Server. Central Server, my friends. Um, so many weeks, that's actually months. Yeah, exactly. So uh, there are there are four qualifiers. There's a qualifier on May 14th, May 28th, June 11th, and June 25th. The uh, the finals will be played on. It seems like it's an it's a one day event from my understanding, and that'll be on the twenty sixth. But that's like a double elimination bracket or something crazy. Like, I, I, that that's that's gonna be a long day. That's gonna be a lot of casting. Um, I don't know if we have a clean feed. I don't know if we'll be a part of that. But either way, uh, if we're not a part of it, we'll at least be watching and cheering on in chat. Genji was banned out by the side of Simplicity with a Diablo uh, removed as well. Don't Simplicity doesn't want to deal with the um, the dive burst potential into the top lane against that hogger. And the sustained chase from Genji is kind of annoying as well. So, and also well sniping is a big thing to consider on top of all of that. The next two picks from the side of Simplicity getting to the latter half of our draft. What are we going to get? It is looking like a Stukov and a Varian. So single target burst. Is the Chromie a priority for the side of Simplicity? Chromie would be really strong for them, honestly. Single target lockdown with the Varian plus the Stukov. Um, temporal loop, there's there's Soothing Mist to deal with Temporal Loop, I guess. But then you're forcing out Soothing Mist consistently, which is actually a big deal. So I, I, I feel like Chromie would be a great pickup for the side of Simplicity, but 30k could snipe it away and maybe turn things around. Stukov wants to stand still, so does Varian. So there's going to be the... Ooh! The Chromie and Kerrigan. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm into it. I'm into it, chat. Just tuning in is this PTR, uh, uh, we're live. Uh, the PTR patch will not go live until the week of May 17th. That's next week. Next week, next week, next week, we will be having our PTR patch live. What day? I couldn't tell you that one. My assumption is going to be Monday, Tuesday. Uh, chat, uh, a couple people in chat have said Wednesday. I feel like chat might be right. Last pick, though, from the side of Simplicity. It's going to be a Cassia. So it's a very auto attack heavy composition into... Auto attack, but spell burst. It's looking pretty good for both sides. Let me go ahead and get the um, Twitch predictions started over here. So give me a 30k in the right side with simplicity in the blue. Simplicity. 
Um, and then I'm just looking over at my Twitch channel really quickly. I think we have, I think that's a good time to start. Yeah, let's start, let's start the Twitch prediction on that one. And, uh, we'll load on into game here in just a second, everybody. Thanks so much for supporting. Thanks for hanging out. Thank you for watching the DreamHack Beyond Qualifier number one. Thank you for joining me over on my channel and checking out these games. I really do appreciate it. And I really appreciate all of you. Thank you for the insane following tonight thank you so much for the just absolute insanity when it comes to follows but thank you also for all the new subscribers all the resubscribers and thank you for the twitch bits as well as the donations i really do appreciate the support tonight and i really thank you all at home for checking out these games and hanging out with me but we're ready to go into game let's go ahead and get on into it on the left hand side we have the members of simplicity on this Dragonshire best of three cure will be on the tychus hosty will be on the cassia lutano playing the Hogger, Legacy on the Stukov and Masquerade playing Varian. For the right-hand side, we're looking at the members of 30k. It's going to be Hazuab's on the Rexar, Liam on the Kerrigan, X-Ray playing the Anubrak, Yasu on the Brightwing, and we have Chromie playing, played by, excuse me, Dino. Getting into mid, checking out those level ones. Let's see what we have here, as this is going to be game number one, Dragonshire. This is usually where Grubby just gives his big brain explanation, and I'm able to sit here and chug water. Uh, but that's CCL. That's CCL. This is uh, DreamHack. <laughs> are the teams playing in the qualifier to set up? Uh, is there more qualifiers later? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so the, uh, there are qualifiers. There are three more qualifiers after this one. They are every other Friday, so not this upcoming Friday, the uh, 21st. The next qualifier will be on the 28th of May. And there are, so there are three more of those. You can look at a calendar and then just kind of do the offset, you know, math on that one. You can also check out the DreamHack uh, battle fee page. I believe that also has some of the information for you as well. X-Ray not going to get caught. Lutano kind of showing as if it was just the hogger in the rotation, but there are too many members of Simplicity missing on the map. So good read from 30k, not stepping too far forward as we will see the bruiser camps up and available and Kerrigan immediately moves over to grab that one. No hogger to hog wild through the left hand side. Hogger actually going down towards this bottom lane will grab themselves the or at least help, getting help from um, Kieran crew. I've actually never seen Tychus utilize the uh, the far side of the wall like that. It's not like he has the range increase either, so that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. I've never seen Tychus do that just to save the rotation. Kerrigan gets some help from Brightwing. Was the phase shift used by Brightwing to get over here? Want to just check really quickly. No, it wasn't. So phase shift up and available still. Shrines open up on the map as that is going to be 1 minute 30 into the, into the map. And wow, instantaneously, 30k has the double cap. Can Liam get actually get the channel? Ah, uh, minions, archer minions, the bane of the uh, Dragonite capture existence. Ooh, wait, though, this rotation. Danger Pink's coming out, yeah, Brightwing and, and uh, Hazuab's considering, considering stepping into that, but Yasu does not manage, doesn't, doesn't go for it, excuse me. Kira has the rechannel onto the top lane. Lutano pushing up the massive wave that was grabbed a little bit later. I actually kind of like this uh, Bruiser Camp grabbed uh, a little bit later from the opposing side. Gives the opportunity for Lutano to clear things out. And then you'll be able to uh, siege in with your own with the spell armor and everything. But while that siege is happening in top lane, I was expecting there to be an answer in bottom. But no, Liam and Dino are clearing out the wave while X-Ray actually has to hearth away. Checking back into top lane, the Misha Bear was split from the Rexar and Hazuabs will lose out a little bit in this top lane. Good bounce from Hogger off the structure to make sure that they're not going to just get that awkward bounce around and just a wee bit of damage going in there but this is looking like it's an attempted trade siege damage race potential would kind of give this over to the side of simplicity but simplicity wants to respond to the more uh, more important lane but also yeah there's so much there's already so much so much minion pressure that uh simplicity can leave all of that and chromie dumping in a lot of damage with these siege giants anubrak very far forward gets the phase shift in from the bright wing and uh, they also had the heal. Was that healing reduction? No, that can't be it. Armor reduction, probably. I feel like I'm crazy on that, but anyways, I'll have to keep an eye out for it. What did I? I'm, I'm missing something. Anyways, I'll have to keep an eye on that one. Uh, thank you again for all the follows. Uh, Raiden, very, uh, very, very appreciated, my friend. Bottom lane not held over. Kerrigan's still kind of hanging out in mid. Hazuabs has free push through the top lane. A seven talent tier was uh, lingering for 30k for a moment, but it's not enough. I 
a set when I woke up today and realized that CCL didn't start till tomorrow. Hey, you got dream hack today though. I mean, you got hots, you got hots regardless. Big push into the bottom lane. There was the time stop onto Lutano, if I'm not mistaken as well. Chromie also does have that time trouble, so it's gonna be armor reduction into the players, uh, into the enemy team, but armor buffed to the friendly side. Kerrigan finds a great combo, Polymorph onto Masquerade, but he's able to just hit a parry and walk away. No channel to the objective. Hogger gonna sneak into top lane. Azuab sees Kier making this rotation up into mid. Kier does not see them though. Channel for the Dragonite's available. Hogger though does stall things out through the top. Just peeking on the vision for the Simplicity team as uh, quite a few show up in mid, but the Hog Wild, or excuse me, the charge from the Misha doesn't connect onto Kier, nor does the Burrow charge from X-Ray. Great Kerrigan combo onto two. Chromie dumps out the damage, and Kier goes down. First Blood goes over to the side of 30k. Masquerade getting body blocked quite extensively right now by so many 30k members, and 30k finds second kill, second Blood, and potential Dragonite, but that's going to be a little bit of time for the... Uh, I can't point to say Yasuobs. The Hazuobs to rotate into top lane to get the channel, and this is a bit of a delay that I was not expecting. Yeah, Hazuobs taking a little bit longer. I was expecting Misha to immediately go towards the cap, so that way Kerrigan can maybe go into this and not being able to give or not giving any over time giving any time over to the enemy side who could potentially get the bottom the moon shrine won't happen. And 30k grabs the Dragonite. What value they get from this? Let's see. Okay, mid lane gonna get opened up a little bit. A new Brack, putting out a little bit of damage. Just throwing out a little bit of CC, if you will. 10 Talent 2 is coming through on the top of our screen, so let's go ahead and cycle through those other numbers as we always do. Uh, Hazuab's pushing up top lane fairly freely. Kerrigan did go for the Ultralisk at level 10, so she does have that extra level of CC, burst, and surprise. We've seen some really cool uh, Kerrigan plays with that Ultralisk. I wonder if she actually dumps it coming out of the Dragonite to mitigate any sort of taunt potential for Masquerade. Seems like, though, Simplicity backs off as there's a big dive into Lutano, who hard pulls out of this mid lane engagement. Misha will get... Uh, taunted to stop any sort of charge or chase onto Lutano. Great play from both sides. I want to see what Varian took at level 10, because I don't think I saw Protected, by the way. Oh, I can check it in a second. No, I got I, I gotta know. I gotta know. Is it is it it is okay, so it is gonna be the uh the shield wall. So protection status by the way. So I I didn't think I saw it correct, but there's gonna be a cocoon onto this Oh my god, a uh, cocoon on to Masquerade, but Hosty still lives? No, they don't. The Ultralisk steals the kill away from Misha, and the Ultralisk continues to chase out as X-Ray needs to back off on the Anubarak. We have Commandeer Odin down and pushing out as there's a camp in the top lane grabbed by the side of Simplicity. Great charge from Misha. We have uh, Tyke is trying to dash out from the Slowing Sands. Lurking off from Stukov's not enough. Cure gets a big burst in healing. Misha comes through, and Cure is able to live, but did, did Stukov sacrifice themselves for the save it is going to be exactly that varian protects themselves more poke potential from dino onto cure and cure almost gets sniped by the sands of chromie while the top lane pushes in want to always look at 130 on the catapult damage so into structures that's 260 x-ray pushing up through the top lane for the fort as well also to max or excuse me to um to match the catapult pressure, but X-Ray utilized the burrow charge to come into the structure itself. Varian finds the taunt onto Dino, who gets the phase shift from the Brightwing. Cure, excuse me, um, Misha is going to try and put some pressure into Cure and Hosty. Doesn't actually slow anything down. Misha goes down, but Invade potentially onto the camp. Masquerade hits it with a Lion's Fang. It's triggered. I think Masquerade did see it. Not 100% sure. Oh, I want to just swap vision to a Kerrigan. There we go. Yasu Queen Obs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of faith and simplicity in this game. I just looked over at the Twitch bet. A lot of, lot of faith and simplicity. Okay. <laughs> All right. Misha goes into top lane, gets the channel onto that for now. Bottom lane has Varian finding a Chromie, but Varian can't just 1v1 Chromie. 
Phase shift comes in. Now Masquerade, you're on the wrong side of this entire engagement while uh, Simplicity tries to burn down the rest of this bottom lane fort to save Masquerade so he doesn't have to tank tower shots, but the tower shots do come through. He'll protect a little bit from those. Web Wrap Cocoon goes out onto Legacy and there will be the kill into Masquerade. The bottom lane fort goes down, but the Ultralisk comes out. Chrysalis used by Liam to buy a little bit of time. Ultralisk goes out. There's the kill onto Varian. There's the kill onto Stukov. Here getting very low. Tries to find a grenade snipe onto Yasu, but it's not enough. And it's three members of Simplicity falling to 30k in the bottom lane. And 30k still, I want to point this out, it is a deathless game for 30k. I can actually show this right here. Uh, well, I guess you can't say deathless. Misha has died three times, but it doesn't count. It doesn't count for a full death, so deathless game. Anyways, a new Brack will get the channel here, and this is going to be 30k grabbing Dragonite, building, building, and building momentum. In the previous series, because this is our third series of the day, ladies and gentlemen, in the, in the second series, Project P versus 30k. Project P had really, really strong early games, but it's almost like 30k knew that their win condition was through 10 talent here. This this game, it's it's almost like simplicity. It, it, the 30k win condition is simplicity over aggressing. Because Masquerade stepping very far forward here. Look at look at this chase right now. Masquerade splitting themselves from the friendly team, and that slight, that slight, ever so slight split. It's not that far from of a, of, a, of of a rotation out from Masquerade. But that moment, that Masquerade is just slightly too far away from the friendly team. There's that collapse, the burst, and it's not just Masquerade. It's a lot of players. That's but that's how 30k is kind of playing this this counter blow up composition. You'd expect that Simplicity be the ones who are going to dive, single target burst, the enemy team. But no, it's 30k coming in with the big single target burst as after Simplicity steps too far forward. Cocoon goes out onto Tychus. Slowing Sands will be underneath them as well. Ball Lightning comes out. Lutano with a big Hog Wild into, excuse me, a big uh, Hortipult in. Hog Wild gets them out, and Tychus goes down, staggering out of death just as Masquerade respawns. Masquerade comes in with a taunt onto the Anubrak, but he will not go down. Liam dives in once again onto Masquerade. Doesn't find the combo. The uh, Primal Grasp is, uh, oh my god, Liam just jumping around with the Ravage. But here's the big thing Liam has no mana here. Dino, very low in mana. As as well. While there is the 16 talents here advantage for 30k, they need to back off and recuperate some of their main assets, that being mana. The vision play there was huge, yeah. Is Masca actually awake right now? I mean, X-Ray was saying that he's tired, Masquerade saying was, was saying that he's tired, so I would say that these tank players are probably on an even playing field, or an even battleground. Um, let's see, if my caster math serves me right, it is currently, what, 2 a.m. in Central European? Standard time? Summertime? Summertime? Right? Because you... C-E-S-T. 5 p.m. P-D-T. Oh, God. I'm trying to cast... Uh, uh, uh... I don't know. I don't know why my brain is just completely blanking on math right now. Well, that's usually standard. Yeah, it's it's about 2 a.m. 2 a.m. C-E-S-T right now. So, if you're in the UK, it's 1 a.m. If you're... Well, if you're a time zone to the right of, of C-E-S-T, which I believe is like Romania and stuff like that, um... It's like three in the morning for you. It's uh, it's late. It is late for some of these players. I mean, literally, the tournament started at two o'clock PDT, so that is eleven PM CEST. That's that's already a late start. Yeah, two AM. Okay, thank you. I got my time zones down. <laughs> uh, Astriel Dino Dino, thank you for the uh, for the follow. I'm never sure if it's Dino or Dino, so we'll just say both. Appreciate the support, everyone, today. Thank you very much for all the follows and the subs. Just, I really do appreciate you all uh, supporting stream and supporting uh, the casting career. We do have the Stukov in top lane able to grab the uh, uh, Sunshine. Moonshrine was grabbed by, I want to say, uh, Liam on the on the uh, Kerrigan, but I'm not 100% sure. Zero to nine in kills. Technically still a deathless game for the side of 30k. And, uh, you know, I, let's let's look at some of these other numbers. We're currently we're currently actually looking at the uh, the numbers that I wanted to look at. We'll, search, we'll show 16s just in a second here. I just want to go, I want to cycle through these numbers once again for you all, just to get an idea of what they look like, because we haven't looked at the later game, and I do want to actually peek at them myself when it comes to the healing as well as the experience breakdown. Because we do have a solid level and a half 
uh, for the side of 30k, and I really want to see where that experience deficit's formed. Obviously, there's a lot of heroics, but some decent mercenary experience grab. Minions have been neck and neck, which is actually really surprising. Usually when a team is a little further ahead on the map, their minion experience starts to suffer because they're not able to press the lanes out or push the lanes out. Passive experience gain, obviously, higher since there's more structural damage in favor for 30k, and uh, same thing with the structure experience. Okay, now I was just curious about seeing that experience deficit, mostly through heroic kills, which is expected, but the minion experience is always ex uh, exciting to see. Hogger doing his best to clear at the top lane before it gets much siege value. Catapult's currently hitting for quite a bit. They're hitting for 228, so that's going to be doubled into the 500 plus range into structures. Mid lane has the Dragonite for the side of 30k. What's the vision looking like for 30k? This is Hazo Ob's vision, as well as you might see some commands of the Misha into the, uh, the trees and stuff like that. Masquerade. I, I feels like 30k actually wants to wait for 20s in all of this. They don't even care for Dragonite this early. Dreamhack is based in Sweden, I thought. Uh, yeah, originally, but I think there's like North American branches and stuff like that. I think uh, I think Dreamhack's gone like international. I think it used to be. It used to. I, I would say because Chat was saying earlier that it started in Sweden, so maybe it's one of those things like it started there and then it got bigger and bigger, so they brought it to North America. That'd be my guess. Also, Morin, good to see you. Another Shogal, oh my god. I expect the replays in my inbox. No, I actually, as I said, uh, we are going to recast some of the other games that were not casted, or we're just gonna recast some of the games in general later on this week. Uh, or I guess next week. Next week we'll be casting those. So I'm gonna bug uh, Steve from Oxygen and Goon for those replays and we'll be able to check those out. Cause I do wanna see what happened with the Wild Heart game. I'm really curious to see um, how Stonks beat Wild Heart. That's gonna be an interesting one, but either way. That's for later this week. As I always like to remind everyone, this is a casting stream. I play Heroes of Storm like once a week, mostly just cast. If you like Heroes of Storm casting, if you like my casting, highly recommend you follow. It's a good place for a lot of Heroes of Storm content throughout the week. I pretty much, uh, I'm not doing Heroes content one to two days out of the week, on average. Like Mondays I don't stream and Fridays are my variety-ish day, but hey, today we're doing this because it's a variety day and I feel like doing hunts. That's the variety. Core is going to be attempted by the side of 30k. Let's actually show everyone the APM while this core attempt is attempted. Hosty trying to throw that ball lightning out. There's gonna be some flailing swipes out from Legacy, but Hosty does end up going down first in this engagement ball. Lightning still continuing out to a few enemy players as Lutano gets some decent bounces around, but the Dragonite's dumping damage into core. Commandeer Owens trying to dump damage into this Dragonite. The core is falling rapidly. It's looking like 30k might be able to take game number one against Simplicity, and yes, 30k is able to do so. 30k take game one in our third best of three. GG, well played. Dreamhack is based in Sweden, but it has tournaments all over Europe and expanded to North America at some point. Uh, they also have uh, the same parent company uh, as ESL. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, thank you for all the follows, everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Great APM, the only important stat. I, I, chat, I know, I, we joke about it, but I know you all love APM, okay? Oh, wrong button. Oh, well, there's that. <laughs> Sometimes you accidentally bump buttons on your stream deck. That was a really good game. That was a really, really fun game. I'm excited to see what's gonna happen here in our uh, next map. The aim with base, best APM and the win. I didn't even see what, I, I wasn't even looking at the APM. Uh, Typhoon Hawk, thanks for the follow. Oh, hey, we're, uh, we're, 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 we're kinda, we're, you know, we're in the stream right now. Let's go fishing, everybody. Uh, any Twitch primers in chat? Anyone wanna get themselves some sick new emotes? You can, uh, we actually have a new emote called Baja Dead, actually. We just got that one put into uh, the stream. So thank you all for the support. But if you would, uh, if you, if you, you know, anyone got anyone got any Twitch chats? Uh, highest uh, Hazo had the highest. I actually didn't look. I didn't look. Uh, let's actually also pay out the people. Thirty K did win that game. Good payouts. Good payouts. Good payouts to the thirty K believers. All right, let's bring it on back to Bandit Nine. Fifth. <laughs> If you're not getting, okay, all right, chat, chat. There was literally last night, there was a Malganus I casted with an APM that went over 1,200. I'm not exaggerating. 
the highest I saw it go, dare I even say 1,300, but there was a Malganus last night who had an APM of 1,200 plus. And... Pfft. See, that's like, that when you follow, you're able to see content like that. Content where Malganus has 1,200 APM. I have no idea how that's possible. I really don't. Like, the highest I ever see APM go is maybe 600. Maybe 600. But, uh, whoo, a Malganus with 1,200 plus APM? What are you doing? Like, I even, I even asked the players. I was like, I was like, yo, is like, is like when, 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 uh, the person, because I can't remember the name of the name of the person, whenever they go, whenever they like do anything, like, are there, is there like, uh, their microphone just like picking up like all of these like, uh, mashing of like keys noises and stuff? And the guy's like, no, no, like literally we like, we don't even hear them like clicking buttons. Like, it's just... Absolute crazy to me as How do you do that on Malganus? I don't know fizz. I don't know Maybe he was smashing his keyboard in rage. No, but they were like literally in the middle of a team fight Maybe they were blind as a bat and just mashing everything. I don't even think they took that talent cap peach. That's the crazy thing, too <laughs> He had an auto clicker uh, that's possible. That's possible when man's got to click a man's got to click. Yeah uh, Is this an APM stream? It is it is yeah was he on crack? Probably. <clears throat> I have no idea. Uh, face roll. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was a really good face roll indeed. Um, I'm just checking things really quickly. All right, that looks fine. Uh, okay. It's all good. Let's see. Can I find the clip really quickly? Did someone clip it last night? I need to see. Uh, I also need to make sure that I don't miss a lobby invite, as I did literally miss the lobby invite. All right, uh, let me see. Uh, content clips. Um, wow, Sage, no one, no one, no one in my chat clipped it. Wow, unfortunate. Did I push the button? Did I push the button yesterday? Um, <laughs> okay, that's me laughing. Uh, is it, is it, is it this one? No. I just, I just want, I just, I'll have to go back and clip it at some other point. I'll have to go back and clip it. Uh, Ruxuro Saki, I think that's how you say your name. Thanks for the follow. All right, we're getting set up for our next map. Uh, we are going to be heading into Tomb of the Spider Queen. So, uh, don't go anywhere. We are right about into another game. You can already see Bandit is already pooped from the immense amount of games today. These, uh, we've had a lot of really, really good Here's the Storm action today. So thank you all for joining. Thanks for hanging out. And, uh, yeah, thanks for just, uh, supporting stream. Uh, we are pretty much a full-time Hotscaster. Woo, that's a weird thing to say, right? Chat not doing their job? What do you mean? Chat not doing their job. What's job? What's chat's job? Feeding me prime subs. <laughs> Welcome in everybody to the map number two and our third best of three of the day. This is going to be simplicity versus 30k. It is a best of three series. This is the qualifier for DreamHack Beyond. This is the first of four qualifiers. If you're sitting at home saying, "Man, I wish I, I could try out for these qualifiers," you can. There's another qualifier on May 28th. June 11th and June 25th. Two of the, the two top teams from each qualifier will then go into the playoffs that take place on July 26th. That is a Monday in, Ju in July. Oh yeah, I know, clipping for the important parts, I know, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, you know sometimes, sometimes chat just sits in awe and it's like, wow, 1200 APM. I can't even touch my keyboard or mouse. <laughs> I, I'll be honest, like, I, I I have a clip button on my stream deck, and I forgot to push that because I was still, I was honest to God in awe of it. So, either way, clipping every second. Thank you, Steam. I appreciate that. Uh, I only have one prime sub to give to Bandit. I KPB, I appreciate it. <laughs> What's a prime sub, Bahamut? Would you mind explaining it to me a little? So, um, if you, so really quickly, uh, the easiest way to put it is, is, is Jeff Bezos, uh, he gives out these Twitch Prime subs once a month to the people that have Amazon Prime. 
And then he also has a bag of money that he runs around with, but it's it's got a hole in the back of it, in the back of it. So once a month, the Amazon Prime users can literally just yoink a little 250 out from that and give it to a streamer of their decision of their choosing. So if you were like, man, I really like Bahamut, I'd like to support him and Bandit, or even get myself some sick emotes, or not have any pre-roller ads on, on his stream, I could use my Twitch Prime over on his channel and get all that cool benefit. <laughs> We're just yoinking 250 out of Bezos' bald bald wallet, okay? You're giving you're taking 250 from one bald man and giving it to another, okay? That's all I'm saying. Let's get into the Tomb and Spider Queen draft as we do have the Medivh a new brack band out from the side of uh, Simplicity Uther's uh Lucio on the side of 30k Chromie Malfurion May on the side of Simplicity with a Hogger and a Tychus already picked up on 30k side and we're into the second ban phase with a tracer ban already on the side of 30k going to respect the dive blow up sustained damage potential of simplicity when you're a kid and the teacher asked if you're what uh what, what you're going to say full-time caster of hots the teacher's face would be yeah um i mean i wanted to be an architect i went to school for that I was an architect for two and a half years, and then I became an engineer for almost five years. And uh, then I quit my engineering job in February and started streaming full time for you all. Hey, Tiger, thank you for using your Twitch Prime. Look at that, we did it, we did it. We got. We went fishing and we got a Prime. Easy, easy. Thank you for the Bezos 250. All right, Diablo is gonna be banned up by the side of Simplicity. Uh, but uh, look, it works a lot hard. I, I, I do my best to entertain all of you. That's, at the end of the day, like, I seriously, like, I used to dream about being able to do this, like casting all day and stuff. This is this is a dream for me, so I really I really do appreciate the support. Thank you all for for the follows, the the lurks, the the subs, everything. It seriously does mean a lot to me. So thank you, thank you for uh, supporting my career. On the left hand side, the last two picks will be coming out from Simplicity, Chromie, Malfurion, and May. More wave clear? No, because you already have the Chromie. I feel like you need Lockdown. No, maybe you don't. No, because you have Blizzard, you have Root. Damage was. Dive damage is actually really good. I like the Genji. I like the Sonya for the solo lane. Sonya into Hogger, not bad. The wave clear on the side of 30k is a little lacking. Um, maybe you go. I, I know I keep memeing about it, but like you could legit go Asmodan here. Um, I doubt that they do that. They're probably gonna go for something a little bit stronger. Is Cassia banned out? You could go Cassia actually. Blinds into the Genji. Sonya would be. Well, yeah, I actually really like the Cassia. It amplifies your wave clear enough so that you're not lacking with the Tychus Cassia and the Joanna, and then Hogger's fine in his own. I, I like the 30k draft quite a bit here. This is actually a really, really good draft from either side, but if I was a betting man in my own channel, I'd lean into 30k. That would be uh, my bet right there if I was able to do so. I caught a Tiger shot. Oh, I hope not. What kind of engineering? Uh, thin gauge metals. I was making um, handrails, guardrails, and ornamental uh, custom fabrications. So uh, there was like one time I did a... Um, there was like a like a bunch of like metal filigree in front of like a police station in like Ohio or something I'm like that. Whoa! Friedberg, thank you for the raw 1,000 bits as we're going to get into game number two. Thank you so much for the 1,000 bits and the wonderful, wonderful alert that you just saw, everyone. Get your predictions in. You got probably at this point, realistically, a minute left since we have delay on stream. But here we go into map number two, Simplicity down in the best of three series in our dream hack beyond qualifier number one. Kira on the Sonya, Masquerade on the May. Lutana going to be playing Genji. Hosty on the Chromie. And we have Legacy on the Malfurion. For the right-hand side, 30k trying to close things out in a 2 of Fashion Through Tomb. X-Ray on the Joanna. Hazuab's playing the Tychus. Dino will be on the Cassia. Yasu on the Ana. And we've got Liam playing that Hogger. We get into mid lane. We check out our first level, uh, excuse me, our level 1 talents and our potential first engagement here. Great setup here. I'm super excited. <laughs> this alert, Stark, you love that alert. I'm sorry, chat. I know you all love that alert. All of our, uh, you know, all it's it's adventure time. How do you not love that alert? It's just, it's a it's a tough tootin' baby. <laughs> uh, thank you again, seriously, Friedberg, for the 1,000 bits. Thank you so much. Not, not even a message. 
Not even a message, just 1,000 bits. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate the support and love. Alrighty. We are here in our Tomb of the Spider Queen map. Can Simplicity take us to game number three? 30k has had a dominant showing in the DreamHack qualifier, excuse me, DreamHack Beyond qualifier number one. And so far, 30k has had 2-0 after 2-0. Will this be a third 2-0? Will it be back to back to back 2-0s? Or will Simplicity break the mold and be able to take us to a game number three? I feel like it's possible. I definitely feel like it's possible. The way that y'all are betting... Doesn't make me believe that. Holy Jesus, 18.9K into 30K winning. Wow. Hey, the belief's there. All right. I'm shy. I, you know, I seriously, thank you for the, thank you, seriously. That, that's a lot of bits. That's a lot of bits. I really do appreciate it. Thank you. What is the tablecloth on a horse mount? Uh, I believe that was a hollow, Halloween mount. I believe that's a Halloween mount. That chromy skin is banned. Uh, is it banned in this, is it banned in this event though? That's the big thing. Because I know, because that DreamHack has their own set of banned uh, skins and stuff. We can look at it. I know exactly where to look, but I can't in the middle of the game. Actually, if you go exclamation point DreamHack and then you go to rules, you'll be able to actually answer that question for me. It's the, like, the Technochrome or something like that. But as I miss all of that, we do have a pick onto the Joanna and a pick onto the Sonya. So it's a one-for-one one between both these teams within the rotations on Tomb here with camps to be grabbed. Um, Siege camp in the bottom lane from the side of Simplicity, but Bruiser camp through mid on the side of 30k. I almost bet Simplicity to be counterculture. Why not? I mean, what if, what if Simplicity wins? The payout's insane. It is banned? Uh-oh. Uh, well, as rules go for a lot of here is the storm things, what it really boils down to is if the players care. Um, there's a lot of players that they they, they don't care about some skins. Um, they probably see it and they're just like, whatever. Like the Techno Chromie, we don't care too much about it. Not an NGS Chromie skin is uh, okay. Okay. I'm a referee for the tournament. Oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh, Fizz. <laughs> uh, we see nothing. We see nothing. We're just, you know, we're just, we're just, we're looking at uh, Harrison Jones. That's what we're looking at right now. Now we have a fight in mid lane potentially breaking out. And uh, gonna have to, gonna have to hound Chromie or uh, Hosty on that one. I, realistically, though, like in, in a lot of the other leagues that I've ever casted in the past, wow, really good spins from Liam and the uh, Tychus has the grenade uh, snipe with for that kill, excuse me. A lot of the other events that I've casted, like Heroes Lounge or even NGS, uh, what it boils down to, because they don't have admins in every game, is really the players. Like, if the players have any sort of, if they're like, why, well, you know, I don't want to play against that Techno Chromie skin, they have to call it at the start of the game, but I don't know, we'll have to see, we'll have to see. Uh, deflect out from the Genji, he's able to disengage. Uh, it's fine as long as the, exactly, Fizz, exactly, exactly. That's what I was just like, as long, if the players are okay with it, if they're not complaining, then it, that, it's no big deal. But if, like, we end the game and then the players are like, oh, there was a banned skin, like, that's, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. that don't count, that don't count. You got the first five minutes of the game to notice that one and say something. Ah, oh, time to remake. <laughs> uh... I don't know what skin exactly, but skins are banned. Oh, so it's the Techno Chromie skin. Some of her abilities are hard to see. So it's like the it's like the cybernetic Kalefoss. Like he's his like flame strikes on Sky Temple are really difficult to see. I believe her slowing sands, and you can even see like her um, her clone target are a little difficult to see. Like that really blends into the ground. But I believe also her slowing sands are you know, it's it's purple like that, which. It's a giant AOE circle on the ground, but, you know, there's a lot of things happening. Maybe you start to, you know, not notice it because of, look at that right there. It is blend in a little bit. Anyways, continuing into our engagement with the first Webweaver phase over to the side of Simplicity. Masquerade is going to icing in. Going to get that blind on the Hazuops, who is trying to push back the enemy team. Utano has a little bit of damage here and there. Top lane Webweaver still getting a lot of siege for the side of Simplicity. No, 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 you just play the game, and if you start losing, you demand a remake. <laughs> uh, why ban a skin? Uh, it's difficult to see. Or, excuse me, it's uh, either the skin's difficult to see, or it makes abilities difficult to see. A good example of this is actually Cuddlebiller Stitches. His future bile on Towers of Doom is really, really difficult to see based on the tile set of that map. 
because there's a dark tile set on the ground or the, the ground itself is dark and putrid bile with that skin color makes the putrid bile very dark and blend in. So you start to lose where's putrid bile, where's terrain that I can walk on. So it's a lot of things like that. Uh, another great example is the Mechaterial. Mechaterial, uh, it's a great skin, but the pros in the past argued that his hearth animation was difficult to see, the Aldruin's Might baseline was difficult to see, and the Holy Ground is another talent that was difficult to see on the ground as well. So there's things like that, like Mecha Muradin or Marauder Muradin, his Stormbolts uh, fire from his chest rather than his arm, and that makes the you know the location of where they come from a little difficult and harder to read for some players. It's it's a lot of it's a lot of minuscule things. Uh, Strike early Ming, I believe um, her magic missiles are difficult to see, so it's a lot of those little things. Things. It's ability powers that are difficult to see on the map or difficult to see in an engagement. And those are what really uh, lead us to ban out a lot of these skins. And I will say this too, a lot of our skin bans are, are from the days of HTC. But it's not like they, because HGC's over, it's like it doesn't matter anymore. Anyways, Leap came in from Cure, Ball Lightning out from the Cassia, and we have a kill into Tychus once again. 3 to 2 in kills with Simplicity, starting to build some momentum here. Uh, half a level to go in favor, excuse me, a half a level lead for the side of Simplicity with Utano diving back onto X-Ray on this Genji. Not able to get the kill, but still putting some decent damage into the Joanna. So we banned characters based on... Oh my god, Steam. No. Don't. No. No. We ban character skins based on interactions in Heroes of the Storm. No other, no other, no other illusions about it. Not characters, skins. The only time we ban characters is when they have uh, either extremely bugged talents or uh, some sort of, you know, broken interaction or mechanic. For example, if Rainer were to come into the live patch with the Rainer's Raider broken the way it is, I wouldn't expect a Rainer ban. I would expect a level 10 ban onto Rainer's Raider. That is how at least I would assume CCL would go about it. I'm sure we'd have discussions internally, but that would be what I would push for. I would say, let's not ban Rainer. Let's just ban the one talent. If anyone doesn't know on PTR, Rainer's Raider instantly respawns. There's no actual death timer to it. Busted. Bugged. Another good example, we didn't ban out Falstead for the last 74 days. We just banned out Thunderstrokes at level, or excuse me, Dishonorable Discharge at level one. Thunderstrokes is a Cassia talent. I don't know what I'm thinking. Blue Web Weavers once again coming out for simplicity. Let me focus in onto this game right now because there has been a little bit of conversation over internal, or, it, over casting. Falling Sword from X-Ray, not 100% sure about it. I still argue the value of Blessed Shield, Blessed Shield, but maybe it's to be able to dive onto Hosty. But who's your dive? Who's your dive buddy? Hogger, I guess. Cassia. But then you're leaving your Ana Tychus very exposed. We we'll have to see here. Speaking of exposure, Icewell comes out. Catching. Yasu. Dragon's Blade comes out from Lutano. Dino very low on 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 health, but is able to pick up gems. Tychus gonna have a little bit of that uh, slowing sands uh, swirling effect onto them. Chromie stops the time for a second or two. Mid lane fort goes down. X-Ray looking a little in the bad spot. Tries to back off to buy some time for maybe their iron skin to come back, but that is 40 gems dropped. That is a large portion of the 30k economy going down the drain as Simplicity moves for boss. Simplicity still needs another 23 gems for a turn in. But this boss will put some pressure through the top lane for our blue team. And as I mentioned in the past, this is a simplicity down in the best of three series. And this is qualifier life flight, qualifier life on the line. There's no bottom bracket. The only time simplicity would have to say, GG, we'll see you on May 28th and try again that weekend. What? It's not looking like that. It's looking like simplicity might take us to that game number three and continue this best of three series showcasing that 30k is not the dominant force that they have been throughout to today. Rip my points, it ain't over just yet. It ain't over just yet. 30k has had some really good late game turnarounds. Will this be another game of that? Or has Simplicity warmed up and found their way into 30k's minds? Mosty on the bottom lane, grabbing the Siege Giant camp to put some pressure once again through the lanes. Turn in was like eight gems away. If I, if I caught that math quick enough, Masquerade steps forward to just uh, be the piggy bank in a sense to grab some of these gems and push up the wave. Sonya grabs another wave through top. It's getting close to another turn in. And I want to point this out, chat. 30k is not at a single turn in yet. They have 50 gems necessary for a turn in. This will be if Simplicity gets these 40 gems in, which they will without contest. This is the third turn in 
and third turn in in a row in a sense for the side of simplicity well played well communicated simplicity looking like a well-oiled machine in game number two on tomb of spider queen as well as hitting their 16 talents here as this web weaver phase descends this is simplicity very much in the driver's seat of this game number three two excuse me Oh, sorry. I gave away the script for for I gave away the script everyone. I accidentally said game three <laughs> uh, It's been a minute since I've seen a uh, Dragon blade Dragon blade we've seen here and there not too often But it does give a uh, dive buddy with that that Sonya who wants to go in as well as masquerade with the icing on top of that This is a hard game. This is actually a really hard game for the side of 30k Meanwhile though simplicity it looks like they're having a blast with this one Masquerade on this May is looking really comfortable. Webweaver's coming in once again. A third time in a row. Sieging in through these lanes. Ball Lightning comes out. Ooh, Hogger gets not the best bounce and Liam gets uh, slammed by Cure. Tranquility used by Legacy to uh, boost up the healing of Lutano and Cure. Webweaver phase has ended. 61 gems in the pocket of 30k. Is there a turnaround potential for 30k through 16? Is that even a possibility? I would say yes. Will there be a, the turnaround? That is the actual. Hmm. That's that's the that's the that's the thinking face moment here for us. Boss will be up here in two minutes and fifteen seconds. Turn availability, as I mentioned, not anywhere near for the side of simplicity. And look at this, Hazuab is actually not trying to push the wave out too quickly. This is a really good experience denial and gem denial to the side of. Simplicity, forcing Simplicity to kind of shark around the map and, and kind of stand still with their experience and, and, and siege value. I actually really like this play quite a bit. Uh, I want to look at the vision for Masquerade really quickly just to see. Uh, so Masquerade actually going to be trying to force the waves up even further. But still, there's gems not able to be picked up. And Masquerade, I think, wants to grab these gems. Is that going to be the punishment? Well, there's no blessed shield, so no. I, don't, I feel like the falling sword just uh, you're missing that that bless shield setup into the horde of uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm harping too much onto it. Maybe maybe I'm too stuck on that topic. We'll have to see how things go. Tazuab still pushing out the top lane. Quite a few gems on them. You say a lot more X blade the, or X strike than uh, d uh, dragon blade. I would agree. I would agree. I've seen the Dragon Blade here and there, but definitely X Strike is uh, has been uh, really, really good. As, as well as like you can have a self cleanse through it in a sense. You X Strike away to the far side of an engagement. Genji Swift strikes away. Hey, GGs. So this camp isn't being shown. Falling Sword from the Joanna on to Cure. Dino chasing in. Hmm. Hmm. Interested about that engagement. I feel like the Falling Sword was extremely forced to try and chase in onto that. Not sure what the plan with the Falling Sword is. I'm not sure either. I'll be honest. Uh, this is just gem drop off right now. 30k extremely turtled up on this map. I, I'm, I'm actually a little worried for 30k because it seems like they're playing this very turtled up hey let's force simplicity to step too far on the map towards us but where is the turnaround what's the turnaround Wh what is your win condition 30k because i'm not seeing it like there's no valkyrie for a single target pull there's no bless shield to lock someone down for the burst potential it, it just it feels it feels like we're on a standstill and i'm waiting for 30k to to make a play but it doesn't seem like they want to And also to note, Simplicity's positioning is really, really strong. Not lining up against walls for Hogger to find devastating blow values, not stepping too far forward for anyone to really get some value into them. X-Ray is gonna get bopped out of the blizzard. Slam's coming in from Sonya onto the structure itself. She'll start tanking damage from this keep, getting that little self-heal from her level seven battle rage. Deflect from Genji, actually a little too late there, but it doesn't matter, the mid lane keep goes down. A win condition to core is opening up for the side of Simplicity slowly. 30k is just bleeding out here. To be to be as blunt as I possibly can as a caster, 30k is the one bleeding out in this and has to make some sort of play. So we see right here, we know that 30k was trying to sneak a turn in. We have the vision of our blue team who grab a boss through the top lane. Joanna gets the turn in. And boss through top lane will be matched against the 
Webweaver. I actually want to jump onto the Red Vision because this is 20 talent tier value for the side of Simplicity as X-Ray is able to grab that camp for the mid lane, but it instantaneously gets cleared out by the side of Simplicity. Simplicity feels like they're just choking out this game. Like, Simplicity isn't stepping too far forward. It's just 30k stuck stuck in these defensive constant positions. But I also want to note, since Simplicity's not stepping up and actually going for the for the Garot or the or the kill, or not Garot, but um since Simplicity isn't trying to end the game, it just they're playing the map. This is still opening up avenues for a 30k to close out that 20 talent tier deficit as well as maybe turn the game around. The longer this goes, the more potential 30k has in my opinion. Death timers increase. Uh, I just, I don't know. I don't know. Like, Simplicity could find one team fight and then go core. 30k can't do that. But if 30k find one really, really good team fight, they could open up the map. Speaking of opening up the map, another Webweaver phase for the side of Simplicity. This will be Simplicity's fourth Webweaver phase. Is this what ends it for Simplicity? We are 17 minutes in, and it feels like this is one of those like 20 plus minute tomb, tomb games. The way that this latter half has been extremely slow when it comes to engagements, die potential, siege, and all around aggression. Sorry. Just looking at some of the stats myself, and I'm looking around the minimap. Uh, Hogger is pushing out top lane. That does show. Lutano is stepping in through mid with Cure as on top of all of this. It's looking it's looking hairy here, chat. It's looking here, hairy for the side of 30k. Can Simplicity win? Can Simplicity reverse sweep in the uh, best of three series? It's definitely possible. Simplicity is walking towards core. Hogger Horda bolts in. There's going to be some tranquility value from Legacy. Ice Wall comes out, but it doesn't hit Dino, who actually gets hit by the Blizzard Swift Strike through. Dino gets wiped out. Big leap in from the Cassie onto Hazuobs. Deflect out from Lutano as well. The core on the side of 30k is starting to lose some shielding. That's going to be the level 20 with the Heaven's Fury as well. Genji goes down. The core is taking a lot of damage. Top lane Webweaver getting killed by Ana, or at least they're attempting to take it down. X-Ray is going to go down as well, and the core falls. We have a series on our hands, ladies and gentlemen, and Simplicity equalize on tomb yeah i agree kpb i agree it's a rough game for uh, 30k in the latter half Who wins the game? Simplicity. Wow, that is some bandit buck payout. Holy crap. That is a massive payout. I just made out like a bandit. Oh, look at you. This is just 30SK's big picture strategy. They're better caffeinated, so they're tiring out simplicity. I have 196 points now, Pog. I earned them during the game. <laughs> who 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 got the biggest payout? I want to know what so like like I saw like Tiger did like 500. I want to know what Tiger's at. I mean, obviously enough to do uh, apparently to do some knees immediately after. Uh, all right, let's uh, let's get everyone the knees and let's wait for our next map. All right, let's uh, hang out here as we are getting ready for map number three. Map number three in our third best of three.
I don't even get what knees is, but I did it. It's it's this. It's just this. It's just this. That's all it is. It's just it's you, you get knees on stream. I have three thousand uh, five hundred. I'm prepared to lose them immediately. There you go. There you go. Uh, knees just means we sit like a degent for a few minutes while we wait for the next game and drink water. Oh man, some good games today. You got like eight point five k. Jesus. That's so much. I'm I'm very sorry to the 30k believers. There was there was 18,900 at least it's showing to me. Exposed knees, yeah. I got my 10 points back. Uh, I got my 10 points got me 175 points back. Something like yeah, there you go. Exposed but okay, butt spot. Um. All right, we have a lobby. Where are we heading? Oh, point or something. Uh, Caster R. Knees equal destroy Baja's back. Yeah, yeah, it does. But it's worth it. It's worth it for you all. Worth it for you all. I'm a man of the people. You know, y'all come through with a uh, thousand bits randomly, a bunch of Twitch primes, a bunch of a, a bunch of follows. How do I not? How do I not? I'm new here and have 3.9k. If 30k reached, uh... Yeah, I, I could agree with that tank. Uh... And dessert, thanks for the follow. Alright, let's get into the game, everybody. There's, there's all the knees. There's all the knees! Let's get into the draft. I didn't know that it paid odds when I made the bet, Sage. Oh yeah. Thank you, Stark. Thank you. <laughs> oh, voice and thank you as well. Oh my god. Well, I don't know why, but it was like two people at once instant instantaneously were like hot tub stream. <laughs> uh Joanna's just a useless tank before 20. Uh I don't know about that one. Uh no 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 no. Someone someone redeemed the knees. Tiger did with a bunch of points. Just in time for me. I'm just making you do stretch. Ah, ah, okay, okay. All right, well, welcome in, everybody. We are in game number three of uh, Simplicity vs. 30K in the DreamHack Beyond qualifier number one. This is the first of four qualifiers. If you are interested in checking out the qualifier or taking part in it next time, the next qualifier will be on Friday, May 28th. Excuse me. The third qualifier will be on June uh, 11th, and the fourth qualifier will be on June 25th, with the playoffs and grand finals taking place on July 26th. That'll be a Monday, but we're here into Towers of Doom. I always say that this is one of the best maps to end a best of three series on, and or actually really any series, so uh, I'm excited to see where this takes us. Do we have some Vikings priority? Do we have any Sergeant Hammer value? What's the what's the game plan? Is there any Abathur plus Samuro? Abathur plus Valera. There's a lot of really cool things that we could see, so I'm excited to see how this map unfolds for us. Really do appreciate, as always, the support and you all hanging out in all of these games. It's been really, really fun thus far today, and I continue to say thank you. Thank you, thank you for being such an amazing community and such a supportive community in our casting career. Last band, though, from the side of Simplicity is going to be the Uther. What is the initial snap priority from the members of 30k? Blesk is good engage if you get three heroic, uh, heroic kill combo type draft. Yeah, yeah, eight old HEG style. That's a good point. That's a good point as well. What do we get? What do we get? What do we get? Mm -hmm. Double rotation strong. Poke potential strong. Zoning is really good. Not a bad kickoff for the side of 30k. Simplicity? What, three alts for one kill sounds useless, actually. It depends, though. It depends, tank. What's your cooldown? If you have, if you burn three alts and it's 60 seconds, that's that's not bad at all. That's not bad whatsoever. Medivh is up and available. Yeah, that's a good point as well. Uh, Diablo and Medivh will be grabbed by the side of Simplicity. Uh, Jesus Christ, I chose the wrong best of three to cast, apparently. 
Uh, Cappuccino, thank you, thank you, I appreciate that. As I said, I will re I will be recasting the games later on this week or later next week. So uh, we'll be checking those out like Wednesday or Thursday of next week. So uh, we will be we will be watching those games at some point. Tychus and Malfurion grabbed by the side of uh, 30k. Oxygen draft Probius. Well, they probably want to lose. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. That's that's probably a good game. It's probably a really good game. I will uh, I will be. I will keep myself blind to the results because I do not want to know how that one goes because I would like to cast it later on next week. Anyways, Abathur will be uh, banned out. They don't want to deal with the macro potential of the of that hero. Lost Vikings are still up and available. Diva Tychus Malfurion could just be a fake to grab Vikings. So far, there's not a lot of like Viking counter value from Simplicity, I would say. Uh, if you want to know about the bracket, exclamation point DreamHack will get you the information you're looking for. I will fight any time 4v5 with 4 alts versus 2. What? That's confusing. Alright, Sergeant Hammer gonna be banned out by the side of, uh... Oh, so, wait! So 30k is either feigning that they're gonna go Lost Vikings because Sergeant Hammer's considered a counter on this map to Vikings, or... I don't know. I don't know. Greymane's a great way to shut down Vikings. Good dive buddy with Diablo. Stukov's just strong. Is there a, like, I, I don't know. Like, I, I, I feel like you could still go Vikings here, but is it too much of a force? There you go, thank you, okay. All right, May Mephisto. Alrighty, okay. Uh, May has some counterplay into the Medivh with the Ice Wall being able to kind of slow down the Leyline Seal combo, so long as obviously May is not caught in the Leyline Seal Apocalypse combo. Uh, Mephisto's mobility is pretty good, poke potential is all there, Tychus is great. I honestly don't know who I'd give this over to. Any bets in this game? Yeah, there'll be bets. Whoa! Okay, that is going to be an Illidan. Uh, okay. An Illidan will be grabbed in game number three of Simplicity versus 30k. Uh, interesting, interesting, interesting to say the least. Uh, we'll let this we'll let this ride for a couple seconds here, so that way the uh, Twitch VOD can kind of, kind of catch up, sort of deal, and all of that good stuff. It is looking pretty good. All right, let's go ahead and uh, let's start that Twitch prediction. That should time out just right. Are they contractually obligated to go to Towers of Doom on Game 3? No, uh, but it is in the script, yes. Floppy Tiger has called it out, yes. It is, uh, it's in the script. It is in the script for us to go to Towers of Doom for Game Number 3. <coughs> and I'm glad that the players did read the scripts. All right, we're going to go ahead and uh, get on into this next game here in just a second. Thanks for hanging out, everyone. And uh, let's go ahead and load on in. I'm ready to go. Let's see who's going to win this series here. On the left-hand side, we have the members of Simplicity. Legacy will be on the Stukov Cure playing the uh, Illidan. Masquerade will be on the Diablo, Lutano on the Greymane, and Hosty on the Medivh. For the right-hand side, we have 30k. Actually, we're going to have a pause immediately, so let's just introduce the teams. Uh, we've got Liam on the... Uh, Liam on the Diva. Dino will be playing the Tychus. X-Ray will be on the Mer... Uh, oh my god. X-Ray will be on the May, Hazoabs will be on the Mephisto, and Yasu playing the Malfurion. Oh. Your Twitch predictions are going to be perfectly timed because the readies are here, we are good to go, and we are ready into our next map. I'll admit it, I'm not prepared. Imagine a game number three on Blackheart's Bay. I'm I'm all there. Now Hazu is gone. Oh, GG's team. That's it. Uh, that is absolutely it. Uh, let's find out. Let's, let's see. What is mask? Oh, I can't, I can't copy. Anyone know what this means in French? Anyone, any, any French speakers in chat? Um, something about going to bed, I'm going to bet. I'm going to bet this is about going to bed. I'm willing to bet. I'm willing to bet this is about sleeping. Uh, wow, these are some big Twitch predictions. These are some big Twitch predictions. 9.3k to the 10.5k. Any translators in chat? Any translators in chat? <laughs> uh, something about an entertainment machine. He had to get his best sausages. 
I'm sorry, hello what? I went to cut my best sausages? Uh-oh. Uh, I, do I need to chat? Do I need to do this? Do I need to, do I need to do this chat? <laughs> do I, do we need to hide the chat? Oh no, we're, we're apparently starting. Okay. Uh, anyways, let's get into the game here. We have already told you who's on what side. We are on Towers of Doom. Let's get into this map. Uh, okay. So it's, it's a, it's a little phallic. It's a little phallic, if you will. <laughs> Oh, geez. Uh, Tychus is actually going for range increase at level one. Increase uh, the range of Tychus by one. What is that? Does it get him to 6.5? No, it gets him to 5.5. Okay. Tychus a little bit safer away from the Illidan Greymane. Uh, Tychus being a little safer to the explosive dive composition of Simplicity, who uh, make me very nervous. We'll have to see how Simplicity goes with this one. We actually have uh, Illidan going into Battered Assault at level one. Increase sweeping strike, basic attack damage bonus duration from three to five seconds. Sweeping strike hits two heroes. Its damage is damage bonuses increased from 35 to 125. I would expect the okay. See now with a level one like that, I wouldn't expect here to be the one to do double soak rotation. But there comes the diva, the smash cure over the wall. The grenade, the grenade's too early, and Tychus doesn't find the kill. Now the massive rotation comes through, the portal will be up, Dino will be the target of this Diablo, but Diablo Masquerade accidentally hits the portal once again. Will that be enough to save Dino? No, he goes down to the Medivh who finds their fifth stack through that kill. Meanwhile, on Grot bottom lane, Greymane grabs the soak that is pressed in from the Mephisto and crew. Speaking of Mephisto, he's gonna grab the fortification camp, excuse me, the siege camp through the bottom lane as May is gonna help out with that one. Greymane splits off to grab their own. Illidan still survives through top lane. I'm surprised by this level one battered assault. I, I'm guessing this is, this is for a little bit later. I mean, I just, I feel like you could have gone into the, what is it, Unending Hatred at level one. If you're going to do double soak, I feel like you'd finish out that Unending Hatred very quickly. But hey, what do I know? I am not Cure. Cure apparently knows everything. We need to feed the machine afterwards. Okay, thank you. So it looks like someone has to pay their parking meter. I didn't know that was a thing in Europe. I thought y'all just had, you know, better parking than in the United States. I just assumed. <laughs> uh, Medivh and crew are going to go through the portal. They do have the uh, aspect. No, no, it's going to be the Raven Familiar. I was going to say not aspect of Raven, but the Raven Familiar. Ooh, Cryofree is used by X-Ray, who does get a bit of a bop into that blizzard, but no follow-up damage for a kill. Hosty at 13 stacks, 39 stacks on the Diablo for those two baseline quests. And Tychus went into the dings at level 4. In the rhythm for the Tychus to increase that minigun duration, not going to go for the bigger they are into the Diablo. And it is, you know, just the Diablo when it comes to the larger, larger lads on the opposing side. X-Ray's Blizzard zones back the enemy team. I'm disappointed in the lack of wrong answers. I was hoping for more wrong answers, personally. <laughs> it's like the one time I asked Twitch chat for help and they're like, oh, Bahamut, we got you, bud. Legacy on the left-hand side of our screen, gonna get the channel down over there. Diva was looking for the top lane, but no, this fight continues through bottom, but it's not gonna stall out the objective. Illidan gets the portal through, so it'll be eight shots into the core of 30k with Simplicity dealing out, excuse me, eight shots into the core of 30k, Simplicity only taking four themselves, and we'll have another objective phase announced here in a little bit. Until then, it's continued soak, continued rotations, and maybe a brawl over the bottom lane. Portal back, oh, great route out from Yasu. Icing from the May wakes up everyone. Portal will expire, letting only Legacy through. This is also gonna be the um, Lightning Nova build for the for the Mephisto. So you have the Furious Spark at one and you have the Static Barrier at level four. I wonder, do we have, I'm actually blanking. There's no, there isn't, there isn't a Lightning Nova talent at level seven, if I'm not mistaken. Great portal forward, but Liam has the bops. Dino, oh, does not live this time. Cure is gonna be on the wrong side of the skate, but finds the, uh, Not friend or foe. Sweeping strike over the wall. Or it might have been... I'm blanking on Illidan talent names. I'm, I'm curious myself. Uh, dive. Oh, okay. Literally just okay. 
<laughs> just, it's called the thing that I was thinking. I was like, it can't be just that simple. That is. It's like Dahaka's enhanced agility. You're like, God, what is that name of that talent that enhances Dahaka's movement speed? Enhanced agility. We're going to move through the other talents. Let's take a peek at those as we have progressed quite far into this Towers of Doom game. As we have another altar face popping up. Center of the map, it will be a single altar. No invade onto the camp from the side of Simplicity. Sapper camp pushed out from the gray main into the bottom lane. Legacy looking to help out Lutano open things up further. Icing out from May. A little bit of poke damage from Hosty on the Medivh. Still working on that level one quest, excuse me, that baseline questing talent. We'll check into those stacks after we have this uh, stats to kind of roll through and we have maybe 10 talent tiers come through as well, depending if there's maybe a massive team fight or even a potential kill. Liam just hanging around here, looking for that dive into the D.Va mech. I also have that sweeping strike to uh, back away as well. Great stream quality, Baja. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thanks for the kind words, my friend. I do my best to give you a single man production crew. <laughs> Try and have some quality, quality stream assets for you all. Ten talents here just around the corner, but the single altar will still continue to break out. Raven familiar value should come through, but there's going to be a root underneath that portal, putting Masquerade to sleep for a hot second, but it's going to wake him up immediately with that Lightning Nova spread damage. X-Ray very low on the May, actually icings into the enemy team, trying to find a bop into the Blizzard. Medivh and Diablo finish out their baseline questing talents. Now Diablo can lose his, Medivh cannot, as he's hit those 40 stacks. Diva still finding the 1v1 into Lutano. Big portal forward and Liam boosts away. 10 talent tier, first for the side of Simplicity, who don't go for the initial channel with the Medivh, utilizing that bird for some scouting. Masquerade in the bush as well. Illidan went into the uh, hunt, and I actually want to check this really quickly. What is the range on hunt right now? Because it's pretty big on Towers of Doom. It's it's okay. So if Illidan was in mid lane, he could hunt to the top or bottom. But if he's in top lane, he's got to make a bit of a rotation towards that bottom lane or towards that mid lane to be able to hunt into the bottom lane. On the opposing side, we do have the Twilight Dream from the Malfurion, Ice Wall from May, Diva uh, Micro Missiles, nothing from the Mephisto or the Tychus just yet. I, I I see a world where we could have Draken Laser Drill. I just feel like Commandeer Odin's so very strong as well. Sustained damage on Draken's pretty good. You also have the level 20 upgrade, which is really strong as well for sustained team fights. Massive Chef from Legacy comes out during the fate. Will connect onto the Diablo. Shredding into him with the Tychus is available, but the Lurking Arm forces Tychus to move. Diablo will lose their souls, but that five second death timer comes out. Commandeer Odin will be the pickup for the Tychus, so no Draken Laser Drill. Hazuab's finding some great angles with these Skull Missiles and opening up the bottom lane on the side of 30k is what's going to happen here as the second, excuse me, third objective phase hasn't even been announced, but it is going to be great siege with the Commandeer Odin for a few more moments as the Illidan and Medivh find the pick onto the Grey Main, excuse me, onto the Diva Mech and Pilot form. Bit of a trade when it comes to all of that, but I feel like a Diva kill versus a Diablo reset on souls, that's a pretty big deal. Now, if your mid lane fort goes down to Cure, I feel like that's even worse of a play. Oh, the root's not there in time. Cure finds the portal from Hosty because it's so balanced that a hero in bird form who can't be stalled out can cast an ability. Like, I get being mounted as Asmodan and summoning, summoning a lieutenant to another lane, but being in bird form and being able to cast portals, I just feel like that's such a... That's such a rough go. Such a rough go. Nothing against, nothing against Simplicity's Medivh. I'm saying Medivh in general. I'm not calling out Hosty. I'm just saying Medivh in general as a hero. Feels a little... Feels a little, uh, broken. You know, portal mastery at level one. Hmm. Trade onto the altars is going to come through. Aladdin comes in with the hunt onto the backline. Malfurion will be uh, receiving the uh, unending hatred and was never prepared for that hunt. Dino getting chased out on the top of our screen. Lutano trying to find a little extra damage. Masquerade thirsting for this kill onto Mephisto. Will be able to find it. Tychus goes down. Diva Mech explosion now. This is looking like Simplicity are running uh, around this map and controlling things so very well as the bottom lane bell tower will be pinged. I wouldn't be surprised if we see mid lane go down as it has what a couple hundred health not even two oh it does have a couple hundred 206 right onto that mid lane fort is there a potential for a six cap it's very rare in in high level games like this but with simplicity's momentum it's feeling that's very much possible we have to see <clears throat>
Uh, we got a we got a moment of rap god. What do you mean a moment? What do you mean a moment? Oh, oh, how dare! How dare! A moment? I'm trying my best out here. <laughs> Double Ultra Phase will be spotting here in the top portion of the map, and we are seeing the members of Simplicity hold over this bottom lane. I actually love the way that Simplicity is playing this, because they can catch a quick mid lane fort in the rotation to top. Actually, even Zer uh, not Zeratul, excuse me, even um, Illidan's able to do. I was just thinking of a different cure hero. Ice, Cr excuse me, Crow Freeze used by X-Ray. There's a great... Great Durns of Hate in the back line, but the Usual will slow things down as well. There's going to be a uh, just a ley line seal. It's just everything to delay out each other as uh, this bottom lane engagement still breaks out. We have Cure fighting Liam, and it feels it feels like, oh no, Liam's going to stay over here and try and stall things out. Doing my best to be an observer in two places at once. Mid lane, uh, okay, this is Cure still being stalled out by Liam, who boosts away, and the bottom lane stall ends. X-Ray goes for the channel on the right, but here's the thing. Medivh, all Medivh needs to do is drop a single oh, no okay doesn't go for it all right three shots into the side of simplicity 30k defends their mid lane fort legacy gets the channel all right so this will be oh no legacy does not get the channel it's delayed out mid lane see here's the thing though i feel like this is actually bad i feel like this delay is bad for the side of 30k because you're giving opportunities for simplicity to find this mid lane fort but no okay they won't be able to do so I was waiting to see if that was going to be one of those situations where it's stalled out, but then still six shots go into the core rather than five. What ends up happening? Five shots go in, top lane's opened up, and that'll be a D.Va mech kill as well as the D.Va pilot going down to Simplicity. 16 talents here advantage over to the side of Simplicity with the Tychus and May working on the bottom lane for it, so a trade will be happening here. We can actually see this is the vision of our blue team. They know that there are two players down here. Diablo finds the quick shadow charge into the mid lane tower and gets the conversion onto that one, and a boss is instantaneously called. This is Simplicity Momentum just absolutely at max like it's it's just like simplicity game number one looked looked like they were having a bit of a struggle to, as, as i say like I, we're, we're being blunt here like <clears throat> simplicity was struggling in game number one against 30k 30k in game number two had moments of life but post 10 simplicity shut it down it's like simplicity game number one figured out their opponent game two figured out their opponent and then utilize the counter that they've put in place. And this is just game number three with the counter in place from the start of the from the start of the map. We've had one death, one kill into the Diablo. And that was Soul's reset. Three sappers go over the wall as well. 12 core HP remains. All that is necessary is going to be two of these bell towers. I'm trying to get us to the APM. Okay, all three bell towers are necessary for the set of simplicity to win out this best of three game here. Lutano gets the camp for the bottom lane. We do have Cure on the left-hand side. There is a massive, massive priority over to this right side, but look at this. May comes in. Legacy will get stalled out by the Snowball. Leyline Seal onto two. Ice Wall goes out onto the Medivh. There's a kill onto the Tychus from the side of Simplicity. Massive Shove onto the May split from the friendly side. Legacy making sure that that healing pathogen spreads around. Icing from the May into Masquerade, who finds the Shadow Charge. Gonna have a nice portal underneath Masquerade if they need to disengage. But Cure continuing to dive into the enemy team. Finds the kill with the help of Lutano onto the May. Cure still stepping forward with that dive. Tower shots raining out. Bottom lane. Look at the bottom lane. We do have Sappers pushing through. And this is actually two of these sappers need to come through in favor for simplicity. So Diva is being stalled out right now. One of the sappers could come through. We do have Hazuobs jumping in with the shade of Mephisto and Diva able to stall things out. But look at this, the mid lane bell tower goes down. This they're going for the they're going for the all cap. They're going for the all cap on the side of simplicity. Can they actually do it? Diva mech will be lost here. Pilot form will it be controlled? Leyline seal goes out onto Mephisto. Durance of Hate, excuse me, Durance of Hate. Shade of Mephisto buys a second or two for Hazuobs. Top lane cap comes through. Barrage has started. Diva, Diva goes down losing her souls. Diva goes down losing her souls. Hello? Little print screen right there. Durance of Hate comes out from the Mephisto. Hit Hunt, hunt from the Illidan. And it's not even necessary for the caps. The GGs are even called 
Lutano, excuse me, not Lutano, Legacy gets the channel on the Stukov, and it's gonna be game number three over to the side of Simplicity. They will close out the series in a 2-1 fashion, reverse sweeping 30K in the dream hack beyond qualifier number one. I wish Stuka said GTFO, I agree. Wait, there was a 700 APM in there? Dear Lord, GG's. <laughs> no, not Diva Souls. <laughs> All right. It's Twitch payout time. Ladies and gentlemen, who won the game? Simplicity.